Hi everyone, I am Dr. Wafa Ibadawi, a senior consultant histopathologist and head of pathology department, AKMICH, KSA. I'll be talking about sex cord stromal tumors of the ovary, adult granulosa cell tumor. General background. Other granulosa cell tumor is an indolent low-grade malignant neoplasm. It is the most frequent among sex cord stromal tumors that show differentiation towards granulosa cells of the ovarian follicle. It accounts for approximately 1% to 2% of primary ovarian tumors and 85% to 90% of all granulosa cell tumors. Other granulosa cell tumors can occur at any age, but are most common in peri- and postmenopausal women. They are the most common ovarian tumor associated with estrogenic manifestations. Patients frequently present with the menometrorrhagia, postmenopausal bleeding, concurrent endometrial hyperplasia up to 50%, adenocarcinoma up to 10%, isosexual pseudoprecocity in prepubertal patients, acute abdominal pain associated with rupture and hemoperitoneum, which occurs in approximately 10% of women. Less commonly, the tumor is androgenic and can be virilizing. Serum beta inhibin levels are elevated and are useful in monitoring for recurrences. Gross appearance. The vast majority of these tumors are unilateral, more than 95%. They range from microscopic incidental findings to approximately 30 cm in maximum dimension, with an average size of 12 cm. The tumor is predominantly solid with small cystic spaces and has a pink tan lobulated cut surface with areas of hemorrhage and necrosis. Hemorrhage and necrosis are not uncommon, and when extensive, the gross appearance can mimic a high-grade carcinoma of the ovary. Adult granulosa cell tumor could show variable macroscopic appearances, including solid gross appearance, admixture of solid and cystic areas, predominantly cystic tumor, and entirely cystic gross appearance. Microscopic features. The neoplastic cells can be arranged in a number of different architectural patterns, including diffuse solid pattern, it is the most frequent pattern, trabecular quartz pattern, microfollicular pattern, macrofollicular pattern, it is the least common pattern, insular pattern, gyriform pattern, watered silk pattern, cystic pattern. These patterns frequently present in different combinations within the same tumor. Diffuse solid pattern. It is the most common pattern and consists of sheets of uniform tumor cells without any discernible organization. Trabecular pattern. The tumor cells in trabecular pattern are arranged in anastomosing trabeculae, separated by variable amounts of fibroblastic stroma. 
quarts of cells vary from one to two cells thick with oval nuclei oriented perpendicularly. The quarts of cells are thick and separated by prominent fibrothicoma-like stroma in these two photos. Microfollicular pattern. It is the most characteristic architectural pattern and seen in 30 to 50 percent of cases. Its hallmark is rosette-like structures that resemble collexina bodies of the gravian follicle. They consist of small round spaces filled with xenophilic cellular debris or dialinized basement membrane material surrounded by multiple layers of granulosa cells with grooved nuclei, that is coffee bean appearance. Macrofollicular pattern. It is the least common pattern and consists of variably sized cystic spaces lined by granulosa cells and theca cells. The larger cystic spaces resemble follicle cysts. Lining cells closely resemble those of normal pre-ovulatory follicles. The presence of cold exena bodies in the cyst wall is a helpful diagnostic clue. Insula nested pattern. The tumor cells are arranged in circumscribed nests and islands with preferably palisaded nuclei separated by variable amounts of fibroblastic, thecomitus, or hyalinized stroma. The nested pattern with retraction artifact in this image has a striking resemblance to carcinoid tumor. However, at higher magnification, the presence of nuclear grooves and the absence of salt and pepper chromatin points to the correct diagnosis. Gyriform pattern. It consists of undulating ribbons and cords of tumor cells separated by scant stroma. Water the silk pattern. It consists of delicate linear ribbons and cords of tumor cells separated by variable amounts of stroma. Note the close resemblance to infiltrating lobular breast carcinoma. In cases like this, metastatic lobular breast carcinoma should be excluded. Adult granulosa cell tumor with focally bizarre nuclei. In about 2% of cases, there are large bizarre hyperchromatic nuclei and multinucleated cells, some of the florid type. The nuclear hyperchromasia appears degenerative. Mitotic activity is not increased. Cytologic features. The tumor cells have scant cytoplasm and pale staining angular to oval nuclei with longitudinal grooves or folds resulting in coffee bean appearance. The nuclei are arranged haphazardly with respect to one another. Mitotic activity is low and does not exceed one to two mitosis per 10 high power fields. This image shows several cold exina bodies. A cellular smear contains a cold exina body in this fine needle aspiration specimen.
It is important to note that nuclear grooves are not unique to adult granulosa cell tumors. They may be seen in other ovarian tumors such as Brenner tumor, steroid cell tumor not otherwise specified, cellular fibromas, transitional cell carcinoma. Leutinized adult granulosa cell tumor. Adult granulosa cell tumors can show focal or extensive leutinization of granulosa or theca cells, especially in pregnant patients. The tumor cells have abundant eosinophilic or vacuolated cytoplasm and round to oval nuclei with prominent nucleoli. The nuclei often lack longitudinal grooves. However, more typical areas of other granulosa cell tumor are generally present at the periphery of the tumor. The pseudopapillary pattern is uncommon and results from discohesion within the tumor, creating pseudopapillary structures that lack true fibrovascular cores. This image shows stromal hemorrhage in a case of adult granulosa cell tumor. Reticular staining demonstrates well-defined fibers surrounding aggregates of tumor cells. Unlike ovarian fibroma and thecoma, where the reticular network surrounds individual cells that is pericellular pattern. Immunohistochemistry. Other granulosa cell tumors are positive for FOXL2. It is a transcription factor and it is the most important marker. It shows a strong nuclear staining. Almost all cases of adult granulosa cell tumor show somatic mutation in the FOXL2 gene. Carretinin, diffuse cytoplasmic immunoreactivity. SF1, strong nuclear staining. Inhibin, it is variable, ranging from strong as seen here to weak to absent in 20% of cases. A smooth muscle actin, it shows scattered cells displaying cytoplasmic staining. Other granulosa cell tumors are also positive for vimentin, estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors. Prognosis and therapy. Other granulosa cell tumors are indolent. The prognosis of granulosa cell tumors is largely dependent on the clinical stage and resectability of the tumor. Patients with stage 1 tumors have a 10-year survival rate of 84% to 87%, compared to 38% to 60% for those with advanced stage disease. The clinical relapses may occur 10 or even 30 years after initial surgery. Long-term clinical follow-up is advised. Unfavorable prognostic factors. Size more than 5 cm. Mitotic activity more than 5 mitosis per 10 high power fields. Tumor rupture. Salvingio ophorectomy with complete staging is the initial therapeutic approach. Tumor Reductive surgery is performed in patients with advanced disease and recurrence. These patients are treated with 
combination chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, and radiation therapy. These are the references. Thank you.